In this video, I'm going to try and compare Fusion 360 with FreeCAD and try and show you the, the differences or the way the approaches that I use anyway to do the same thing. So uh, I'll show you how I do it in Fusion, then I'll show you how I do it in FreeCAD. We're just going to do a simple box like this one, and then we're going to um, go through and do the, the paths or the um, CNC G code. In Fusion, I'm just creating a sketch. Just went into the, um, I'm in the design um, workbench. And basically what I'm gonna do is create a sketch of a box. I'm just using the box tool. I'm just gonna add some dimensions to it and then make that a solid. Then I'm just gonna draw on the face of the, of the solid that I have, another box, and then make that a pocket. I've just positioned the box where I wanted to be from that bottom left corner. I know there's several ways you can do this, but I wanted to do it this way because that's the way I'm going to do it in FreeCAD as well. So I'm kind of trying to show you the difference between the two. In FreeCAD then, jump into the part design workbench and we'll create a body Then we're gonna create a sketch. And then in that sketch, we're gonna do something similar. I'll show you how I do that. Um, you do have to constrain the sketch in FreeCAD. You can actually make the model without constraining it, but if you do, you can get some weird results and sometimes it'll just blow up and it won't actually do it. So constraining, constraining sketch is a good idea and uh, it's quite easy to do. Takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, they're pretty easy to constrain. I like to position all my models from the origin right there and the, where the X and Y cross at zero, zero. I do that because it's a little easier with the CNC part then afterwards. So I always start everything down in that bottom left hand corner or an offset in the positive direction from that, um, that bottom corner like that. Once we constrained the sketch and closed it, then we can make a pad out of that sketch. So FreeCAD calls it a pad, Fusion calls it an extrusion. It's basically the same thing. Then we can select the face and create a sketch and that sketch will be on the face and then just draw the box again and dimension it from the corner of the box or the, or the origin and move it over to where we want it and then we should be in good shape in FreeCAD. Once we have the drawing on top of the face, then we're going to do the pocket operation. Somehow FreeCAD has like a magic where it knows that that's a pocket and puts it in there. So you don't have to select anything. It'll just do it. You just tell it how deep you want it to go. And you will have a similar output to what we had in Fusion 360. Going back to Fusion 360 and moving into the machine in workbench we're going to create the g code to cut out that simple pocket in fusion there are a number of selections you have to make now they have the machine in there that's a new thing you just select the three axis machine for what i'm doing i have a cnc router as mine's an mp cnc um, so I always pick that. I never add any stock 
to the model because I'm generally cutting the internals not the external shape and we have that shape already done because I'm doing woodworking so mostly I have a template the wood is already set to the outside size so I have no outside <clears throat> additions then I move the WCS over onto the top corner and then I figure out from there where I want my pocket to be and then I set up my cuts and I usually do multiple depths if it's this is a 15 mil deep hole so I'll do it in about four or five mil deep, uh, deep cuts and I'll let it um, go around and, and clean it out you'll see in Fusion it's just one uh, operation it's a little different in FreeCAD So once we simulate the cuts and we're happy with them, we got all the depths and the, the uh, depth of cut and all that good stuff worked out, we just post process it and create the G code file. It's fairly simple. I have a dedicated post processor for the MPCNC that was written by somebody else. And so that's installed. So it just, it basically makes code that works with my machine. Then back on to FreeCAD in the path workbench. So you need to be in that workbench to be able to create the paths. Uh, you go in the path workbench, you select the body that you're working on. I only have one, so it's a very simple uh, setup to start with. And then there's several dialogues where you'll position your part, make sure you have it exactly where you want it. And I found it a little bit confusing. If I move the WCS up into that top corner, like I do with Fusion, it creates another model and it moves that model so the WCS is still at the bottom and it, it just makes the whole thing a little confusing for me so I don't do that I just leave it at the bottom and just work from there you can set your top um, by just touching on the face and then clicking a button and it'll set the top and then the bottom of the slot or the bottom of the pocket uh, you select that face and click on there and that'll give you your two heights and then you have to create, to do this, you have to create a path um, that will be the pocket using the pocket um, object. You create that path, it cuts out the pocket, but it doesn't clean the edges. So then what I had to do was create a profile using edges and let that run around and do a clean. So it, it's actually two operations. One is taking out the bulk of the, of the material and the other one is actually cleaning up the shape. I don't know if that's absolutely the only way you can do it, but it's certainly a way I made it work. Um, I am relatively new to FreeCAD and its um, path workbench, so I'm learning as I go. And if I find new things or I find ways to improve, I'm certainly going to include those in future videos. But for now, I'm just working on making it work. So this is how I would do it in FreeCAD today to make the same uh, block with a hole in it if you like um, in FreeCAD that I did in Fusion uh, I've been using Fusion for quite a long time I started out using FreeCAD before Fusion then I switched to Fusion I forgot basically everything I knew about FreeCAD and then I've come back and started learning it again so if you're transitioning over we're kind of transitioning together but I'll just show you what I've done and if you have suggestions or comments or ways to improve um, absolutely share those with me because uh, you can help me to improve or you might point me in a direction where I can find ways to improve things. There are things that um, in FreeCAD work differently. Um, some of it 
is um, maybe a little more confusing than it is in Fusion, but it might be just because that's a different way of doing it. So take a look at what I've done here and see what you think. So you can see from the simulation, I'm not sure what's going on with the, the actual simulation itself, though something seems a bit weird about the colouring of it, the, the brown bits look like they have some screw bits in it, but it actually does simulate the shape that I want to cut out, and it, it takes out the bulk first, and then it does the outside shape, and you can switch the order of those if you want to, um, but the way I did it was to take out the bulk of it, and then just go around and clean up the edges. So you'd essentially end up with the same thing that we would have ended up with in Fusion, and to be fair, it probably took me just a little bit longer in FreeCAD, but it's because I'm new to it. So I would imagine if, if I was doing the same from scratch, I could probably get there in about the same amount of time. Then finally, the post-processing in FreeCAD, you basically set up, you click the button to post-process, you pick up the post-processor that you want. I don't have a specific one for the MPCNC, so I just use the Gerbil post-processor, and I made sure that it output line uh, line by line it put outputs the, sp the speed that I want the feed to happen which is what I do which is what happens in Fusion 360 as well so the g-code looks fairly similar when I look at the two well, I hope you've enjoyed the video I try to keep it as short as I could it's already 12 minutes long so I'm not going to go on any further I will cut these parts and see what they look like but I'll probably save that for another video as far as um, going forward, I'm going to do some other comparisons, but if there's something that you want to see specifically or if you want it to be more tutorial, you know, more slowly through each of the steps, I'm more than happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments below. Thanks. If you're enjoying it, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Thanks.